no? So what is safety? Okay. So here we have a picture, no? Uh, showing a man who is um, trying to um, install no an, ele an electrical wiring on a distribution pole no so if you are going to to see this one no or to to evaluate the picture or to describe the picture so the question will arise if this is safe no safe practice or not no so by the looks of it so it is not safe first because as you can see he is using a bamboo ladder no in which the uh, the sturdiness cannot be uh, cannot be depended on no and also he he is not using the proper uh, personal protective equipment no like hard hat gloves then safe tissues and most most especially the place where he is connecting the wirings are full are full of hazardous wires that could have a current no? which can cause electrocution no okay so what is safety no safety is the state of a person or anything which is away from harm da danger or damage so if you are um if you are safety no or if if your condition is safety therefore you are on a place where is there is no chance for you to get harm or to be in danger or to incur damage no so harm so what is harm so harm is sensible pain due to injury or body dysfunction caused by illness feeling of hurt emotional disorder and mental dysfunction so harm so when when we feel harm so we feel we feel also the pain either that is physically or emotionally so that's why it is said that that the pain no due to body uh, to, due to injury or body dysfunction which could be ca caused by illness no or feeling of hurt or emo or emotional disorder and mental dysfunction no then accident so accident is an unplanned or unforeseen event that resulted bodily harm or damage of pro properties so accident that is unplanned no so when we when we uh, say an accident so no one can predict or no one can foresee an accident because an accident is unplanned no then uh, during an accident it can cause bodily harm or damage to properties or damage of properties then causes of accident so we have two types of or two causes of accident so the main causes no these are, these are the two so first we have an unhealthy act so when we say an, an unhealthy act so that is uh, violation of co commonly accept accepted safe procedures or processes so we are doing something that is in violation of what is the accepted safe procedures or process so if you are doing that then that might cause an accident for example if you are going to drive a um, motorcycle so what is the 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 accepted no safe procedure for that one so you must wear a, the proper helmet no if you are uh, driving a motorcycle without wearing a helmet then therefore you are doing an an, an unhealthy act and there is a bigger chance that you might encounter accident or you or if during an accident you can incur um, severe um, injury no then we have unsafe conditions so that is the physical or chemical property of a material machine or the environment that may result in injury of the person damage of property and other losses so for example if you are working on a on a certain um, company which has a a uh, which has substance that can uh, that can cause um that can cause sickness on your uh, on your body no? or, or can harm your body then if you are told to use a mask then then you then you are not doing that one then you are now um under unsafe conditions no that might cause or that might give you um some body dysfunction or some harm no so hazard no so hazard is 
anything including work practices or procedures that has the potential to harm the health or safety of a person so if there is uh, if there is a workplace and and within that workplace uh, we could recognize hazard no so hazard is the potential no that uh, that certain hazard can cause accident or could harm a person or could make a person unsafe no so that is hazard no then types of hazards so we have five types of hazards so we have physical so it includes floors stairs work platforms steps ladders fire falling objects slippery surfaces manual handling no lifting and pushing or pu pulling excessive loud and prolonged noise vibration heat and cold digestion poor lighting ventilation and air quality no so when we say physical hazard no so those are the hazard that you could um, recognize physically so for example floors so uh, when does the floor become a hazard so if if it is a slippery floor or an even floor stair so if the stair has no proper um railings no work platforms so like um like what you call that one um scaffolding no if the scaffolding is not properly secured then it can cause hazard no what other so excessive loud and prolonged noise no so because it could uh, it could damage your eardrum no vibration heat and cold radiation no so if you are working on a semiconductor company so there is a high chance of radiation so it could cause or it could give your body physical uh, harm no so that so that is considered as physical hazard then you have mechanical and electrical hazard so it includes electricity machinery equipment pressure vessels dangerous goods forklifts cranes and hoist no? so when we say um, electrical or, mecha or mechanical hazard anything that uh, that is um, uh, that is um, what do you call that one uh, include electricity or electrical equipment and machine could give you hazard because if we, if we could say um, electrical machine so and, and as long as there is a presence of electricity so there is a chance that you will be electrocuted no? for for other um, machines that are not um, operated by uh, by electricity so there is also a chance that you could um, that you could incur some um, bodily damage especially if your hands will be eaten by the machine or will be caught by the machine or a or your or any part of your body could be caught on the machine so that's why um, some machineries or almost all of the machineries present on a workplace have the so-called enclosure or guard or fencing no then we have chemical so includes chemical substances such as acids or poisons and those that could lead to fire or explosion cleaning agents dust and fumes from various processes such as welding so chemical so it includes everything that can harm your body which is considered as a chemical no so that is chemical hazard so the most common um a hazard no with regards to chemical on electrical works is the welding process and also the painting no if you are going some uh, to do some painting job no so that is one of the main source of chemical hazard then biological hazard includes bacteria viruses mold uh, mildew insects vermin and animals so so during the pandemic so this ba bio, bio, biological hazard is rampant on the workplace no because we have the so-called covid 19 which is caused by a, a a virus no so that's why during the the pandemic so all workers no on a company are required to have a to have the rt pcr test and to wear um face mask and face shields no because there is a biological hazard now then we have psychosocial environment so includes workplace stress source arising from a va va variety of sources no so someday if you will be working on a company 
So you must um, you must see to it that you will not be stressed no, on your workplace. No? What are the examples of stress in the workplace? So for example, uh, you, ha you have um, over workload. No? So you have so many workloads, so it can give you stress. Or you have a, a certain um, co-worker no? that, that could give you stress because he is uh, somewhat bossy. No? So that could give stress, and if you have stress, then it could give your body hazard, no? So, and also, aside from that, it could make your work inefficient, no? Okay, next we have, so hazard may arise from work environment, no? So the environment is said. The uses of machineries and substances, so that is um, chemical, electrical, and mechanical hazard. Poor work design, so this includes the physical hazard and inappropriate system and procedures. Okay, so methods of for ident identifying hazards. So first, we must um, see to it that we have the injury and illness records. So we will we need to review, you know, if our coworkers are are um, having a check up per day so that to, that's why in a certain company you no know, there there is a requirement that they, they must have their own nurse no then they must also stay on the trend of the workplace safety you no know, the standard of workplace safety then review the potential impact of new work practices so if there is a certain uh, newly arrived machine so before that machine could be operated so we must read carefully the manual and try to see what are the hazards that could that could arise from using the machine no not only that we uh, we must know how to operate the machine but the first thing to do is to see to it if there is any hazard that could arrive no in using that machine so that we could you could create or we could create a a a proper no a, a proper way of eliminating the hazard then doing work through surveys on infe or inspection no, on the workplace so this is very important no someday you will be working on a construction site as a site engineer a project a project engineer no so you must always have that you know, that keen eye on identifying hazard no because especially on a on a construction project if if there occur an accident no that might uh, that might um, give no uh, someone severe injury no or death itself so the whole project will be stopped for us for a certain period of time for the investigation so that's why there is a motto for all safety engineers no and project engineers that there must be zero accident record in the whole duration of the project no so someday you will be working as a project engineer so you must have that um, that skill on ident identifying hazard because if you will be able to identify hazard you could find ways to eliminate that hazard no? okay so next we need to consider the implications no of the standard in when analyzing work processes or the safety standard then investigating workplace incidents and year hits so when when we see near hits so those are the instances no that that could lead to accident but uh, somewhat uh, we manage to prevent no or we manage to avoid that accident so even if 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 the accident did not occur so we must investigate uh how that near hit occur, uh, occurs no because we don't know no um at this moment it is a near hit but the next day maybe it will not be a near hit it it will become an accident no so for that so we must uh, investigate that one and find ways to eliminate those type of circumstances then get, getting feedback from your employees or from your co-workers no then consulting with the employees about their um, safety no uh, safety um, standards then benchmarking or um, making comparison to other workplaces okay 
So we have also organizational safety, health, and and health protocol, no? So uh, a certain company must have OSH, no? OSH. So later um, on your fourth year, so you you will have the subject basic occupational health and safety. So this is just a run through of all that one, no? So first we'll go to the internal factors so which is all about the factors that you need to consider inside your workplace to assure that your workplace is a safe one no so here you need you need to consider the standard set no set by our own um, uh, Bosch standard no uh, set by Dolly and also the international safety standard or this one the OSHA no then safety councils so in a workplace there must be safety councils because the safety councils are the one who will create drills and safety protocols no because for example earthquake drill fire drill so uh, a company must have that uh, that plan activity every year or annually then safety protocols so when we say safety protocols those are the the procedures that uh, that one must follow and one must do during an emergency for example if there is uh, if there is an earthquake so there must be the proper um, evacuation uh, plan you no know? or for example uh, there is an accident that will occur you no know? so for example uh, there is someone that is electrocuted you no know? so there must be the proper procedures or protocols to be followed no to ensure that that the uh, that the uh, worker that is injured could be um, could be taken away from the from the hazard site and to ensure also that the other co-workers will be also on the safe side as well no okay then education so education is an effective way for businesses to maintain their commitment to safety so that's why um when when we say safety you no know, at the beginning of the day so as project engineer or site engineer someday so you must always uh, teach your personnel or uh, review your personnel on the safety protocols of your project site okay next so conducting safety drills no so just like what i said er, um, earlier about fire drills and earthquake drills okay then we have so maybe we'll not be including this one or the threshold limit okay so we have evaluation of hazards and risks so we have risks so the risk is the probability or the chance that harm might come to a person then risk evaluation is the process used to determine the likelihood that people may be exposed to injury illness or disease in the workplace arising from situation identified during hazard identification process so when we say risk that is the chance that you might uh, incur harm you no know, if you uh, if you manage to see the hazard then the risk evaluation so that is now the process in which you are going to determine how likely you no know, that such um, accident may occur if given the condition of hazard you no know? okay so this is the risk assessment table you no know? for example we have the likelihood you no know? so the likelihood is uh, for for an accident to happen is very likely likely unlikely and highly unlikely so we, we, we will say very unlikely so there is almost 100 percent chance that an accident will occur you no know, so likely um 80 uh 60 to 90 percent unlikely so 50 percent highly unlikely so 10 percent then when we say consequence so those are the result if such accident may occur so we have fatality so meaning that then we have major injuries so when we say major injuries so uh, there is a certain portion of the body that may require uh, months or years to heal no then minor injuries so few weeks or few days then 
ne uh, neg negligible injuries so like small cuts or um, um what about, bruises no okay so how like to happen or how likely to happen so very likely no can happen anytime likely can happen sometimes so that's why from 60 to 90 percent unlikely can happen but rarely very unlikely it could happen but probably never happen no for example how unlikely for you to be hit by a lightning okay so that is one in a million chance so that is very unlikely compared to the likelihood no that um, that you will fail the subject if you will not give time for uh, for this uh, for this certain subject no give time uh, to study for this subject no so that is the comparison no okay next we have how bad is it likely to be or the um, consequence so fatal kill, kill or cause of permanent injury so for example amputation no so kill meaning death no so we will say permanent injury so that is amputation no so uh, the leg or uh, or a certain part of the body is cut no and and the worker is now considered permanently disabled no major injury can cause long-term illness or serious injury no so that's why it requires months or years to be cured then minor injuries cause someone to need medical attention so that is minor injury okay then we have negligible injury so cause someone to need first aid so if a certain cut or a, or a certain injury only needs first aid so that is considered as negligible injury so for example uh, small wounds so which can be uh, easily cured by uh, by by alcohol and a band aid no so that is a neg negligible injury Okay, so type of risk, you have high risk, medium risk, and low risk. So when you say high risk, work must, must be stopped and controls are done immediately. So if a, if a hazard is a high risk, so therefore, uh, the work must be stopped and controls are done immediately. For example, a certain construction site no, have, have, um, have been hit by an earthquake. So there is a high risk that that, that, that building, which is under, under construction, uh, could could collapse so that's why immediately work must be stopped and controls are done immediately no then medium risk work may continue with much caution or safety and control are going to be applied no so if 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 it is medium risk so you could still work on the site but you need to wear safety um a safety a equipment no uh, personal protective equipment then low risk, so minor control and done, and safety instruction are just given to workers. Okay, controlling hazards and risk. So how to control hazards and risk? So we could have elimination. So eliminate the the machine or the or the thing that can cause hazard. No, substitute. So we need to substitute. No, the machine that could cause hazard. Isolate. So that is we must put some fencing on that machine engineering method so that is to to create no or to or to modify the machine so that the so that the machine or for example a certain area of of the construction site could not uh, incur hazard no then administrative control so that is for the for the site for the site engineer to to give penalty to the workers if they will not follow the safety protocols then the last one is to introduce no PPE or to let the workers use personal protective equipment okay so risk management so these are the programs that are that are used no in the workplace so that the control of the hazard cannot be stopped no so the 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 safety uh, the safety protocols are 
always followed. No? Okay, so aside from safety and the safety protocols and the hazards, so there must also be in a workplace housekeeping because housekeeping promotes safety. So we have housekeeping is the act of cleaning the workplace before and after the job is done. So we have six importance of housekeeping. So we have safety importance efficiency importance because if our workplace is clean then we could be efficient workers productivity importance quality improvement work improvement and certification importance okay so the common practice for housekeeping is the 5s so 5s is a good method of solving and maintaining housekeeping not only at the workplace workplace but on everyday life so the 5s is based uh, is based on the you uh, know the five japanese words so the first word is siri which in english is cert no so which means we have to identify things that are still needed or not needed no so if we have uh, many electrical materials and tools so we need to sort which of those those materials and tools that can be used or those that can be recycled no so that is sorting or siri then siton or systematize so which means we need to organize things no in tagalog that is sinupin no so we need to organize all our tools or all our things so that we could easily find them if we are going to use those tools no then siso or sweep no means we need we have to sa sanitize or clean our workplace so not only that we are going to sweep the floors but also we need to we need to sanitize our workplace and then sikitsu or uh, standardize which means we have to standardize what we are doing so we must follow the safety protocol and the proper way of cleaning things so the the most common one is to uh, to, to clean uh, first the high places before cleaning the floor no then the last one is shitsuki or self-discipline no which means we have to do this process without loading or we must continue applying 5s without um waiting for our supervisor or 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 the owner of the company um telling us to do so no so sariling kusa or sariling sikap in tagalog so that is shitsuki or self-discipline okay so now we will go to electrical safety so electrical safety is the state of being safe from hazards caused by misuse of electrical equipment or the use of electricity so there are only two types of hazard which which can be arise from the use of electrical energy or from the use of electricity so we have fire or electrocution no so what are the ways to eliminate electrical hazard so we have the loto or the lock out tag out so that's why it is loto so putting a sign and locking the panel board during troubleshooting an electrical system to prevent accidents accidental energizing of the circuit so for example if we are working on a certain electrical system no we are uh, we are um, replacing a bulb and we need to turn off the breaker. So we must put a lock on the panel board and a tag that, that says that um, el electrical repair slash troubleshooting. No? So that if another personnel will go um, to check no, the panel board, so... He will not um, accidentally turn off the the, this, the the circuit breaker and you yourself could be electrocuted. So that's why we should apply also loto or lockout and tag out. Then we have PPE or personal protective equipment. So using the proper clothing for the job. Then we have overcurrent devices. So the use of circuit breakers and fuses that can trip off during an electrical fault no because the breakers and the fuses prevents uh, prevents um arc flashes no and sparks that could cause fire especially if there are uh, uh, the, uh there will occur a short circuit on your system so because they will trip during a short circuit or in overload no so what is ppe 
So PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. So that is any equipment worn. So that is worn by the worker to protect him from hazard of the work the workplace. So we have the most common uh, PPE used by an electrician. So we have first the safety helmet or hard hat. So should be non-conductive, meaning uh, the hard hat must not be a conductor or a um, metal so it, it it could be plastic no which can provide overhead uh, to provide protection from overhead wires structures and falling objects they have insulating gloves or hand gloves provide protection from electric shock they should be worn when accidental contact to live conductors is possible so even if you will be a project engineer so you must also wear the ppe no during the uh, site inspection on the construction site. They have safety glasses, so that is to protect your eyes from electrical arcing or flying objects. Safety foot footwear or safety shoes, so should be non-conductive or the rubber shoes. It provides protection from electric shock and falling object. Then the last one is insulating mats, which uh, used when working on live conductors or where accidental contact is possible. So they must, uh, they must never be the only means of insulation. Okay, so one of the hazard for, uh, for the use of electric el electricity or electrical energy is fire. So when we say what is fire, so f fire is the chemical reaction between a flammable or a combustible material and oxygen. So we have the so-called fire triangle, which is um compounds a uh, composed of three components that is needed to create fire so we have oxygen heat and fuel so if one of these comp component is not present then fire could not start no so we have here so for example in in a certain um in in a certain scenario so there is oxygen there is heat but there is no fuel or there is no combustible material so the fire will not occur so that is the reason why um firefighters no um um we will use um water no to turn off the fire because they will try to um suffocate the fire by taking out their fuel no fuel okay okay so as um as project engineer someday no so you must always have this motto so you work to live not to die work safely okay